Jay here for Straight for Paddock. This is the paper talk. As you can see, I'm in my kitchen and the weather outside is gloomy, which sums up my mood. And I suppose it sums up most Manchester United fans' mood after the Reds' defeat at the hands of Galatasaray at Old Trafford last night. Just a shambles. I don't want to get into it too much because you had my post-match thoughts with Joe Smith yesterday. Also heard from Andy Tate. If you've not seen them, you can go and check out those videos as well. But a lot of the news this morning does centre on sort of the morning after the night before, a bit of the reaction, some of the quotes, what's going on there. Also, the obligatory takeover stories, because where would we be without takeover stories? We had the story the other day about Sir Jim Ratcliffe buying or aiming to buy 25% in the club, a 25% stake, and how that could leave the Glazers still in charge, basically. Well, there's a story in the Telegraph saying that Whilst that is true, that he is looking for 25%, he could finally outmaneuver, outmaneuver sorry, Qatar by attaching long-term ownership clauses to a new 25% bid for Manchester United. So he could take over the 25% and then eventually take over the, the, the lot, the full sort of the lock stock and two smoking barrels, everything when it comes to the club. And he's done that before takeovers. And we saw it before, I think me and Scotty, when we were breaking the news about this fresh bid or this different offer from Sir Jim Ratcliffe. We're saying that Scotty made the point that this is kind of how the Glazers took over United. They didn't just come in and buy all the United shares. They bought them bit by bit until they were the, the majority shareholders. So there could be something in that. The Telegraph is reporting that that's his sort of plan and that could outmove a, outmaneuver Qatar. Also, I think in the evening news, I've seen it that the Sheikh just seen Biddy's still there. Qatar aren't going away. This doesn't mean Sir Jim Ratcliffe has been successful or he's going to be the new owner of Manchester United. It just means that this is part of a long-term plan for him, but it hasn't put Qatar off. Qatar still very much in the game. As always, we will keep you updated if there are any developments on the takeover, anything else that, that that's related to that, whether it's a new bid, whether it's the Glazers making another statement or whatever it is, it, we'll, we'll keep you posted. It's just all very deflated, isn't it? Because we're in trouble in the Champions League. We've lost two games. We're in trouble in the Premier League. We've lost, I almost lose count, you know, was it? Three is it in the in the Premier League? Or is it, I'm a four, sorry, four in the Premier League. It's terrible. I can't remember how many games we've lost in the Premier League. Shocking. Things are going are going wrong, and the Glazers are still here. It's just it feels like there's just chaos reigning at Old Trafford at the minute. And talking of chaos reigning, I want to get into this one. Um, my good friend Adam Parson tweeted this last night uh, a video, and he wasn't the only one. It was just he sort of summed it up of Galatasaray fans in the United end. And he, he's, he's posted, he put United will tout off their own fans to the tune of £400 and ban fans for passing on tickets to their mates for a meaningless cup game, but let about 10,000 Galatasaray in the home end without any intervention. Felt like I was away in Istanbul. Absolutely disgusting from United. Now, a lot of people have been commenting on this. Barney from Red News, other people, I think Andy Mitten's done something about it. Like, it is frustrating and annoying when you see so many away fans in the United and scattered around as well. You've probably seen the footage of them. It's all over social media. Now, the, the sort of counter-argument would be, and any of you who watch the channel will go, hang on a minute, Jay, didn't I see you sat in the new Camp in the Barcelona end or the home end showing you Marcus Rashford t-shirt? Didn't I see you even further back going in the Atletico Madrid end? Yeah, I've done it. I've gone in the home end on a European away. I've done it twice in two years. I did it in Madrid. I did it in Barcelona. There's nothing new there. Fans have been doing that all the time since you know the Champions League began because it's a way for a lot of fans to to go and, and watch their team. If you can't get a, a ticket in your way ballot, let's try and get one in the home end. Now, the issue you've got here is just with United, it's the hypocrisy of it all. United are clamping down on anyone passing on tickets, or sort of stopping fans touting, basically, even though it's not really touting, if you're just passing on a ticket to your mate, and there's all this talk and these emails flying around about the atmosphere at Old Trafford, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and we're clamping down on this, and then you're just selling thousands and thousands of tickets to Galatasaray fans. It just stinks of hypocrisy, as a lot of things do when it comes to Manchester United Football Club. Now, you may argue, well, what can United do? If fans go and they become a member and they buy a ticket from legit means, then you can't stop them, and I understand that argument. I think what Barcelona did was I was there, they clamped down because if you look at the Frankfurt game, Frankfurt, I think it was Frankfurt, took thousands of fans. I think they just took over the new Camp, basically. So Barcelona made it very, very difficult to buy tickets in their end. 
I don't, you couldn't even just sign up if you lived in Barcelona and you've never bought a ticket before. You couldn't just sign up, become a member and buy a ticket the day before the game or whatever. They weren't having any of it. It was very, very difficult. You had to find ways and means to get around it. It wasn't easy to have a ticket in the Barcelona. So maybe if United are going to take this stance of clamping down on people, passing over tickets. And also, it's not a good look, is it, having thousands of fans scattered around the ground, obviously celebrating and cheering and kicking off, basically, or causing kickoffs throughout the stadium. You don't want that. It isn't great. It isn't safe. And just as Barcelona clamped down, I saw fans getting ejected, United fans getting ejected from the new camp, then maybe United need to do something about that. If they are going to take this stance on tickets, then you need to be consistent with it. And you don't just need to be punishing your own fans for passing on tickets to the mates and then selling thousands and thousands of other tickets or home tickets to the away fans. It makes no sense, as nothing does at this club at the minute. Eric Ten Hag, as you would expect, sort of defended his team and defended Andre Onana as well. Andre Onana had just had a, he had a stinker, didn't he? There's, 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 there's not much you can say about it. I mean, he was at fault for the, one of the goals. It was just his fault. He gave the ball away. And I also thought he, he could have done better for the Icardi chip. I mean, Icardi's chips in from what, 10 yards out, out and it's gone, what, in the middle of the goal? It's just, it wasn't a great night. It was a horror show, to be honest with you, from Andre Onana. And he had a bit of a stinker in, in Munich, didn't he? he? was at fault for one of the goals there. He's not doing what you thought he'd be doing in the Champions League. Now, Eric Ten Hag's defended him, says he has the capabilities to be one of the best goalkeepers in the world. I agree with that, but he's got to turn this around quickly, Andre Onana. Manchester United is not a forgiving football club when it comes to goalkeepers. Those of you old enough to remember the post Schmeichel, pre Edwin van der Sar era, We'll know we went through a lot of goalkeepers. Some of them, like Fabian Bates, for example, a World Cup winner, regarded as the best goalkeeper on the planet. Didn't really work out for him. I know he won a title. Mark Bosnich had been at the club, came back, Premier League proven, didn't work out for him. Massimo Tahibi, a complete disaster. I think he lasted three games. One of the worst signings we've ever made. It's not easy being a goalkeeper for Manchester United Football Club. And Eric Ten Hag has got to fix this problem on Joe Nana, whether that is taking him out of the firing line for the Brentford game Sticking with him, whatever it is, you've got to sort it out. Fergie did it with De Gea. Remember when Anders Lindegaard came in? They swapped around for the first few months of, of David De Gea's reign at, at Manchester United. <sighs> Those tweets were doing the rounds, weren't they? De Gea would have saved that. De Gea wouldn't have done that. I thought this guy was meant to be better than he's better than De Gea with his feet. Just not, not happening, is it? Forgive me. I need this, bro. I need to have some caffeine. Um... So Eric Tanag said he feels that the team's connected. He stuck up for his goalkeeper. He said the right things in terms of what you'd expect him to say, to be honest with you. I don't expect him to come out and throw his team completely under the bus, if we're being brutally honest. He's got to sort of defend them slightly. Now, Jamie Jackson, our mate Jamie, has done a piece in The Guardian saying that Ten Hag retains long-term Manchester United back in despite slump. He says that Eric Tanag's position as Manchester United manager is secure for the foreseeable future and is not an issue up for the discussion or for discussion by the club executive. Despite a dismal run of early season form of six defeats from 10 games, including the defeat by Galatasaray, tonight retains the confidence of the hierarchy who view the Dutchman as the right manager to take the side forward in the long term, the Guardian understands. I hope so. I really do. Because I believe, you know, it's an I think long term, he is the right man. I don't want to see us go through this cycle again of another manager coming in or a caretaker coming in and then him bringing, you know, we almost right off the season already and then another manager comes in makes some signings has a bit of success or does okay then he gets sacked it's just a, a vicious circle isn't it and we've got to break it I think long term Eric Ten Hag will be the right man for the job the the, the sort of the twist in that headline or, or in that comment is the bit where it says for the foreseeable future you lose it uh, against Brentford sorry um, you lose against Brentford you lose against Sheffield United pressure's on you you, you carry on losing the Champions League pressure's on you Eric Ten Hag he's not daft he'll know He's got to start getting results. He really has sooner rather than later. Just a couple of stories I'll go over quickly. Jaden Sancho, you had this yesterday. Likely to leave United in January. I think the only way he's staying is if Eric Tanai gets sat before he before he leaves. Then maybe the new manager comes in and fans him, which should annoy me, I'm being honest. He obviously doesn't want to play for Manchester United or he doesn't want to play enough to sort it out with the manager. So, yeah, I'm, I'm losing sympathy for Jaden Sancho. And I've always liked him and stuck up for him, but I'm, I'm just not there at the minute. Um... Says here that United as well. This is from the mail that Everton's Jared Braithwaite is on our radar along with Antonio Silva of Benfica. That's a youngster from Benfica. I think he's about nine. And Nice's Jean-Claire Tadebo. 
you know, just Sir Jim Ratcliffe is involved. Maybe he can make that happen. Who knows? Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there. There's a lot for Eric Tanaga to fix. He's got to fix the goalkeeper situation. He's got to get his players playing again. He's got to get confidence back and he's got to do it sooner rather than later because despite the fact that the board are backing him for the foreseeable future, as you all know, with this board, that can change very quickly at Manchester United Football Club. Listen, don't forget, we've got the event in Dublin on the 28th. There's a link in the description. Come and join us. Me, Joe, Maka, Housen, John O'Shea. Yeah, John O'Shea, the man himself, the guy that nutmeg Figo, one that scored the winner in front of the cop in the last minute. Yeah, we'll be chatting to him on stage as well. So it's going to be a great night. Hopefully, hopefully you can make it. I'm going to leave it there. The sun's still not come out here in Salford. I'll be back later on tonight. It's a night shift for me today, kid. I'll be back later on tonight for the uh, Paddock Live. Want you lot to get involved in that. Join us, me and Joe. Let us know what you think about what's going on at Manchester United and how worried you are about what the future holds. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. <laughs>